Hi, my name is Danish, and I'll be presenting our work on spatio-textual reasoning for answering tourism questions. This is joint work with my co-authors Shashank Goel, Mossam, Parag Singla from the Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. Consider this real-world question that was posted on a travel forum. Here, the traveler describes that they're arriving into Havana from the UK and are staying at the Hotel Florida, and that they would like recommendations of good restaurants nearby so that they don't have to venture too far. To be able to answer such a question, the system needs to have access to a collection of entities along with some descriptions about them, maybe in the form of reviews. It needs to know where each entity is located so that it can reason over the spatial constraints. And of course, the full question needs to be reasoned over to understand what the traveler is seeking. This is challenging. For instance, there are multiple location mentions that are, that are mentioned in this question. Which of these is required for reasoning? Not all of them. It doesn't matter where the traveler is arriving from if all you need to know are recommendations of places to eat near Hotel Florida. The, the constraints by themselves will be maybe underspecified or vague. For example, what does nearby mean? Finally, this needs to be incorporated with review-based reasoning, where the reviews potentially describe each entity that there could be a candidate answer for this question. I'll begin by presenting our network for spatio-textual reasoning. I will then describe some results on an artificially constructed data set that requires only spatial reasoning. And then I will present work on a real world data set that requires both spatial and textual reasoning. The network consists of three subcomponents a geospatial reasoner for geospatial reasoning, a textual reasoning network that incorporate information from reviews and make recommendations about entities, finally, a joint scoring layer that can incorporate both spatial reasoning and textual reasoning. We first tag each question with the named entity recognizer and then label any location mentions in BIO encoding. Then given any candidate entity that is under consideration as an answer, we calculate the distance of that candidate entity from each location mention and encode them as shown on screen. Thus, given this location specific heights neighborhood, the distance of that candidate entity is encoded in the green box and the other two dimensions encode the BI encoding. Once we have the location encoding, we combine them with word vector representations of each token and then feed them into a three-layer three bidirectional GRU, which is self-attended to generate a question embedding. There are two goals of the distance reasoning layer. One, learn whether a location mention needs to be used for reasoning. And two, learn how a location mention needs to be used for answering. Given the encoded question that we developed in the previous slide, and remember these are distance aware question encodings that are specific to the candidate entity and, and under consideration, we apply a series of feed forward blocks on each token position to generate distance weights. These weights capture the contribution of a spatial distance between an entity and each location under the constraints mentioned in the question. For instance, a question may include location mentions that could be involved in simple near or, or far constraints or other complex constraints such as saying that something should be within driving distance or within walking distance, etc. This DRL layer uses the distance aware question encoding to understand the nature of the question of the constraint being expressed and to figure out how to compute distance reasoning ways to express those constraints. Once these weights have been computed, they are multiplied with the distance vector that we used in the previous, on the previous slide to generate a spatial relevance score for this question. As mentioned previously, answering such questions also requires reasoning over text. We use an existing model for this task called CRQA. Given a question and an entity document, which consists of sentences from reviews, we encode them using bi-directional GRUs and self-attend to generate representations for a question and each sentence in the entity document. We then use question entity attention to generate a question aware entity embedding, which was then used in a weighted dot product to return a textual relevance score. In order to perform joint reasoning over both textual and spatial components, we reuse the geospatial token encoding that we use in the geospatial reasoner to generate weights that combine the geospatial relevance score and the textual relevance score to return a unified spatio textual score that indicates the relevance of each candidate entity as an answer for a given question. We now describe some results on spatial reasoning using an artificially constructed data set. 
we generate an artificial data set using 16 templates that cover either near, far, or a mix of near and far constraints. For example, a near constraint such as, do you have any recommendations of an entity near location one? Any ideas for an entity near location one and also close to location two? So the entities are replaced from keywords that are randomly selected from this list. So for example, do you have any recommendations of a restaurant near the location one? Do you have any recommendations for an eating joint near the location one? We also include templates that have distractors. For instance, yesterday I came to stay at location one. Any ideas of an entity close to location two, but far from location three? So the answers are going to be entities, and these entities come from a set of 200,000 entities that we've collected, and geotag to find the exact old answer entity by distance. So for instance, in the case of a near constraint, this would end up being the nearest answer entity by geospatial distance. We now present our experiments on this data set. We, we compare the performance of the spatial reasoning network without the use of the distance reasoning layer. We also compare with BERT basic equivalence of these models. We use HITSET3, MRR, and DISG as our metrics. The HITSET3 metric scores an answer if any of the top three entities returned are correct for that question. MRR is the mean reciprocal rank. And DISG is the average distance from a gold entity. We evaluate ac across all four classes and we find that the distance reasoning layer helps in both encoder settings. We also find that the BERT-based models are better than the corresponding GRU equivalents. And we find that as the candidate space increases, the performance of the systems drop. The full results are available in the paper. We also find that as the number of location mentions increase, the performance of the system reduces. Finally, distractors also deteriorate performance for both BERT-based and non-BERT-based spatial reasoning networks. We now present the results on the task of joint spatio-textual reasoning. We use an existing data set for our experiments on spatio-textual reasoning. This data set has approximately 42,000 QA pairs spread across answer entities that are either hotels, restaurants, or attractions. An example of a QA pair is given on the left. For each question, we have answered entities that were actually returned by real world users on a travel phone. Since the dataset did not have annotations for location mentions, we use a BERT based tagger to tag location mentions and it had a macro average F1 of 88.03. We then use Microsoft Bing APIs to tag location mentions and we found that it resulted in an almost even split between questions that had location mentions and questions that did not have location mentions referred to as non-location questions. We compare the performance of spatio-textual reasoning with multiple baselines. SD, which ranks candidate answers in order of distance. SPNet is just the geospatial reasoner. CRQ is just the textual reasoner. We also compare with two pipeline-based models, running the textual reasoner followed by ranking in order of distance, running the textual reasoner, and then doing spatial reasoning. We scored each candidate answer with respect to location mentions and constraints in the question. The first two models use only location data, and we find that joint spatio-textual CRQA is significantly better. We also compare with pipelined methods of textual and spatial reasoning, and again, joint reasoning is significantly better. And of course, joint reasoning is also better than only textual or only spatial reasoning. We also study the performance of spatio-textual reasoning on questions that have location mentions, which we refer to as location questions, and those that do not have location questions, which we refer to as non-location questions. We find that in both cases, the spatio-textual CRQA model outperforms textual reasoning, and we also study the importance of distance-aware question encoding, and we find that it is important for both location and non-location questions, though as expected, the benefit of using question distance aware question encoding in location questions is higher. The results are follow the same trend on the full set. We call that questions that have location mentions may not necessarily require spatial reasoning. We therefore manually annotated 100 questions from the test set that required spatial reasoning and studied the performance of different models. We find that even in this case, this, the joint reasoning model outperforms models that are doing only spatial reasoning or, or textual reasoning. 
just as we studied the performance of models on questions that required spatial reasoning, we also studied the performance of models on questions that had location mentions, but none of them required to be reasoned over. Again, we find that the spatial textual CRQA model performs better than all models. And we note that the CRQA model, which is the textual reasoner, does significantly better than the previous case. We also conducted an error analysis and found that in nearly 38% of the times, the error could be traced back to textual reasoning. In 22% of the times, the answer entity returned was far from a location that was required in the question. And about 13% of the times, it was influenced by a distractor. To conclude, in this paper, we presented a joint spatial textual reasoning model, which incorporated a distance reasoning layer. We found that the model worked well with distracted locations, and it also performed better than models that only involved textual reasoning or spatial reasoning, or even a pipeline combination of the two. The model also establishes a new state of the art on the POI recommendation task released recently. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to drop me an email.